How can you be a greater expert in your business or in your field? This is something I discussed at length on my podcast, The Focus Bee Show Season 4, how to optimize your time, energy, and attention to have greater profit, impact, and expertise. And in today's video, I want to discuss more in depth how you can be a greater expert in your field, whatever that means to you. And I'm going to go through three main points because I like covering three points. I find it satisfying. (laughs) The first point is around constant learning and 1% improvement. This is something that James Clear talks about in his book, also Atomic Habits, but in his blog, around the idea that if we improve every single day by even just 1%, this has a tremendous impact in the long term. This is also the same concept and idea behind Tiny Habits movement, and it really, 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 really works. How can you apply this in your business or in your field to be a greater expert. It's quite simple. Look at the different things that you want to learn and start to just learn a bit more every day on these topics. If every single day you're learning something new, you're applying something new, this is linked to this idea of constant learning and 1% improvement, you will see ah, (laughs) a difference over time. It will really add up And exponentially, you will start to notice how suddenly you know about this topic or you know about this. But be very clear about how you want to go about this. Don't just start dipping into everything, but have an idea and a strategy of either certain things that you want to learn about. And if you're going to do courses or read books or have a mentor or a trainer on these topics, and then you can start to add up your 1%. And this will really support you to gain knowledge in your field. To be perfectly frank, this is probably something you're already doing because if you're really passionate about what you're learning or what you're teaching or what you're working in, you will quite naturally gravitate around topics, books, concepts, videos, podcasts on these topics. Uh, I look at myself in the case of any form of self-improvement. It's sort of an obsession. (laughs) I think I have read so many books on all the different topics from productivity and focus and high performance and business and leadership and absorb the podcast like a sponge. (laughs) And the only YouTube videos I watch on this. So really, I don't think this is something that you need to know on top of it. It's probably just something you're already doing. The reason I bring it up is if you're going through a moment where maybe you're losing a bit of passion or enjoyment or motivation, maybe you need to reconnect with this. I know that in some times where I've just been in do, 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 do mode in my business and I've stopped learning new concepts, I feel it. So it's very satisfying and it's very nurturing to learn more in these topics because it makes us feel that we're growing and it's just satisfying for all the neurons in the brain. (laughs) That's how it feels to me. Anyway, this was the first aspect on expertise. The second one is one that probably you don't think about, which is linked to self-compassion. Now, how are self-compassion and expertise related? Because If you're too mean almost to yourself, this will slow down how much you learn and grow. So if every single time you're learning something new and you're progressing in a field, if in those moments you're overcome by imposter syndrome and self-doubt and you start being overly critical to yourself or perfectionist, This will prevent you from A, maybe taking actions like applying to be a keynote speaker for this or being a guest on a podcast or reaching out to someone you can collaborate with. This will slow down your expertise and your thought leadership because you will be overly critical towards yourself. So this is why it's absolutely fundamental to work on your self-compassion. How do you do this? (laughs) I know it's a tricky one. You might feel that you're working on it. One way is to look at the words and the thoughts and the way you speak to yourself. Start to practice speaking to yourself as you were to your best friend, because you would never say to your best friend, hey, you totally screwed up after they spent four hours doing a report, would you? You'd never say that. (laughs) Or I don't know how you act with your best friends. I would never say that. You'd probably say, hey, you did a great job, you know, and if they say, no, no, but be honest, uh, where, where could I have improved? You might say, hey, there were one or two things, but otherwise it looks good. Now, what would happen if you start to say that to yourself? 
instead of noticing all the failures and the mistakes. You would start to feel better. You, your self-esteem would grow, your self-confidence would grow. And contrarily to what you might believe, you don't actually become arrogant. I think there's this misconception that if you're too self-compassionate, either become you either become complacent or you become arrogant. And really that doesn't happen because self-compassion isn't saying that you're the best person in the world, so you don't become arrogant. It's just sort of saying, hey, you did a good job. That's it. And when you say that to your best friend, they don't become arrogant. They smile and say, you know, thank you. So treating yourself with kindness and with respect and with self-compassion is something that I don't feel is discussed often enough. And for all the hyperachievers out there, I know I tend to work a lot with hyperachievers and with perf perfectionists. Be kind to yourself. Be nice. We're only here once, as far as I know, so you might as well be kind and nice to yourself. And this is really where self-compassion is so important. Again, another key aspect of self-compassion is don't compare yourself to others all the time. This is super, super draining. And just compare yourself to yourself. How have you improved? How have you changed? If you're doing things not as well as before, okay, what's going on in your life? How can you get back to that stage and just have this measure of comparison with yourself to see your own evolution and progress because you have no idea of the journey of other people and what they went through and the obstacles they had and the challenges and maybe the sort of personal traumas also they went through maybe you don't want that <laughs> so you know be grateful for your own journey and look at how you can use that in your own life to grow and progress so self-compassion super important I know it seems a bit far related from expertise but trust me it will support you to take on these opportunities and to grow as a thought leader or in your field as an expert by being more compassionate to yourself. And the last point is around high performance. So to become an expert in what you do, to become a thought leader, whatever you choose to call it, embrace the principles of high performance and you can do this in many different ways there's the book high performance habits by brendan bouchard that's absolutely fantastic like i told you i'm a self-development junkie <laughs> and maybe you've read it too these are a lot of key principles around high performance but the idea really here is to look at how you could be a greater performer and performance doesn't just mean going on stage although that's a great type of performance or being a musician it also means just showing up every single day with that passion with that joy with that energy so here the idea is to be super clear on what you want to achieve this is the you know seek clarity is one of the first habits of high performance habits by Brenda Bouchard and then have that level of energy and productivity that enables you to show up and deliver results on a daily basis. And it's also essential to raise that level of necessity to feel that it is important and necessary to reach those results. You can do this internally or through external accountabilities. These are a few of the key habits in the High Performance Habits by Brendan Bouchard. And the whole field of high performance is linked to how you manage your states and emotions and your thoughts, how you generate more energy, how you're clear on where you're going, how you take massive action. So when you start to look at all these pillars of high performance and apply them in your business and in your life, then this will, I guarantee, support you to get to higher levels of expertise in your business. Whether it's because you suddenly have the energy to take on more projects or to learn new things or to work with people that are real experts also in the field not that you were not a real expert <laughs> that are great experts is what I meant also in that field and you collaborate together and then there's a synergy and all this fantastic stuff is going on this reminds me of another book the seven habits of highly effective people probably read it and if you haven't read it by Stephen Covey highly 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 recommend it it's the first book on high performance on self-development or whatever you choose to call it that I read and it absolutely changed my life the reason I remembered it right now is he talks about synergize how we put and collaborate and synergize everything together so becoming a high performer will support you to be a greater expert in your field these things are totally directly correlated for sure. <laughs> so these were my three main tips on how to become an expert in your field or in your business. 
Number one, looking at how you can actually learn more or have that 1% improvement every single day. You're probably doing it already, but a quick triple check with yourself that you are. Number two, sounds a bit off track, but have that self-compassion. Be compassionate with yourself. And number three, strive to be a high performer, not by being strict or mean to yourself, still with self-compassion, but generate that level of energy, productivity, necessity that you need to actually take it up a notch and be at that level of high performance expertise, whatever you choose to call it. This is it for today. This is it on this topic, fascinating topic and really, if you're interested in being an expert in any given field, it's because you're passionate about it. So probably just follow your passion and you'll find ways to take you to higher levels of expertise then. It's a sort of natural process. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Once more, if you want to listen more on this topic, you can check out my podcast, The Focus Bee Show, Tea and Pie Season 4, how you could optimize your time, energy and attention for greater profit, impact and expertise. And you can find out more on the other seasons too, where I interview different thought leaders and high performers on lots of different topics. So check it out if it's the sort of thing you're interested in. And if you've enjoyed today's video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share it with a friend or a family member that you think could enjoy it. Thank you so much for tuning in today and wishing you a fantastic day.